All right, everybody, welcome back to some Project Zomboid. I hope the audio is pretty good in this. Uh, I got a lot of things going on around me in my house. Doing laundry, got a fan on, and I think people are working outside. So, hope the noise gating works. Um, sorry if it doesn't, but uh, this isn't one where you can just kind of load checkpoints. So, we're going to jump back in it. Uh, you remember we were Todd McKinley, the security guard, trying to make his way to Main Street, and we had just slept, and he woke up at about 3 in the morning. So I'm going to keep trying narrating it from his point of view. I hope you like it. Um, just a reminder, please join the Discord. Uh, subscribe if you're watching. It really helps me a lot. It actually doesn't help me at all financially or whatever, but um, there's a weird... Uh, is it serotonin effect when you get new subscribers and I get to talk to people and it's just so fun. So, all right, let's get into it. Todd wakes up at four in the morning, decides he needs to turn this light off. He's been over encumbered for a while. He still hasn't found a bag. He needs to figure out what he can get rid of and what he needs. This tin can. I'm gonna drink the water bottle, but he's not. Why won't it let me drink it? Weird. Oh, he does have a satchel. You know what it was? They took it off. That's what it was. He loads up his satchel for the work ahead. Things he doesn't need him right away. He knows he's going to run out of cigarettes soon. Already read Cooking Volume 1. I'm going to take this empty notebook. He doesn't know why, but perhaps later, going through his life's work, what's happened, help. Not a sink. Weird that I can't drink. He decides to continue his work. Let's take a look. This looks like it's Main Street here. Being a night watchman means he has always had good night sight. He's worked on it. He read a book one time by one of his favorite authors, Tom Clancy, without remorse, and it talked about losing one's night vision by lighting a cigarette. He would never be so foolish. Pipe wrench. But he continues to move. The sewing kit there, it looks like. Guess not. And in the story, Jack Clark, an operative for the CIA while he's doing missions, notices that, um, brittle pen is that? But let's open some peaches. He notices that one of the guards lights up a cigarette in the dead of night and he says, you know what? He's not going to have night vision for the next few hours. I always that always stuck with me. I always remembered that. We're well fed. He's well fed. He likes that. Here we go. Drink. Is there a TV in here? Not. He needs to keep going to find the TV because he knows his show is coming on soon. It's towards the next house. There's a car in the driveway. Maybe he'll get lucky. Todd kind of laughs at himself at these people that leave their windows open. Just because you live in a small town doesn't mean you can't, you shouldn't be prepared for everything. This one has a TV. He'll come back. Keeps looting. Just because you live in a small town doesn't mean people aren't going to use you. Grabs the makeup. He's always wanted to do this. Puts full camo makeup on his face. Or should he do skull? gonna do skull 
wants to embody those that he's killing. Oh, speaking of which, here they come as he's eating his strawberries. He gets his knife out and he welcomes them. Quite a few of them, more than he expected, but nothing that he can't handle. As he says, he's seen enough anime. Ooh, annotated map. I take that. Freaking volume two. Take a look at the map. You can drop the makeup now that he has a skull on his face. Hopefully the map is of... Oh, it's of Louisville. I don't care about that. Maybe later when he goes to find his sister. It'll be helpful. Anything else in here before his show comes on? Nothing really. Wishes he has a book so he could multitask, but he decides and take a rest and tune into the TV. I'm gonna fast forward time. He zones out as he waits for the TV show to start. I guess he could have. He thinks so. Oh, I guess I could have read the cooking book. He forgets that he'd already learned quite a bit from the TV show. To leave the TV on so that people know or zombies get distracted. He's going to check the car. Who knows? Maybe he'll get lucky. It isn't locked. Checks the seats. The glove compartment. He can't believe his luck. Not only has he found a key for it, he's found cigarettes too. Beautiful, beautiful cigarettes. Decides to rename, read his map. This is Rosewood. Bash some guns here next. Ends right here. He's not in Rosewood. Rosewood's a town over. He's probably not going to take it. He'll leave it behind. But these bandages are always useful. Let's see how much gas. There's no gas in the car. Which isn't great. He checks the trunk. Empty gas can. But he will take he finds a place and probably leave some stuff behind should check the truck the uh, engine as well just in case it is not in great shape so perhaps he won't um he is overburdened, though. He needs to drop the gas can. He can find these all over the place. Hey, sorry, everybody. I have to run real quick. I'll be back. Todd continues his way. He remembers there's stores up over here. He wants to check out. Can't believe these lavish backyards that these people lived in. Did they take advantage of it? No. Maybe we did deserve. Ooh, lots of books. I can read that. He thinks about all the wasted hu waste of human potential there, there was. Working nine to five. Carpentry level. Carpentry level three might be good to grab. Read that later. Looks around. Sees a better meat cleaver. In better condition, he takes it. He's enjoyed the feeling of cutting into people. Never thought it would be so freeing. He sees the ice cream, but he knows he's overweight. So he's not going to do that. Take that still overweight he's 93 
kilos. There isn't really much in this house. He hopes to find a closet, maybe some guns or anything. There's a suitcase here and a crowbar. Crowbars can be useful to open doors that he would not normally have access to. But again, he's overweight. So he decides he's going to drop some of this stuff. He can always find these things later. Not the cigarettes, of course. He still loves those. He's going to drop the pipe wrench. Put the crowbar on his back. I'm gonna try not to use the crowbar for anything but breaking into places. He has to. The bail bondsman. Small little mini ball. Something that he thinks Saul from Better Call Saul would be placed in come at me fiends he says in life you were a bunch of losers that hung out to the mall and in death you're the same you don't deserve to be living in this world any longer bales oh there's two more Oh, he narrowly escapes. He did not see the horde behind him. Everyone made fun of him when he read Max Brooks' zombie guide. It's proving invaluable here. He absolutely decimates. Actually, I don't like using the decimate word. Um, destroys any hope they have. This one has three holes. This one has two holes. He's going to switch his jacket over. And now he sees Pizza World, one of his favorite restaurants to eat at. Oh! He knows he can't eat here, though. Oh! Checks himself. He's bitten. There's nothing he can do now. There's only one thing left. The adventure of Todd and suddenly needs to go back where he killed all those zombies and find that leather jacket.
looking for something very specific. He's dead, so he might as well have some bourbon. He knows that being bitten, there's no survive, there's no chance of living. But he's hoping. against hope that perhaps he can leave something behind. He cannot believe he cannot find scissors. Needs thread as well. With the scissors, he can cut up the leather thing to create a journal. Oh. Well, he's now in a race against time to get his thoughts written down. On some glue. Lots of pens. I think that should be something on the ground, but it isn't. Where could he find scissors before his time runs out? Maybe in the back of the ambulance. Trauma bag's nice. In the front of the ambulance, perhaps. Trying to smash the window to get in. Doesn't think it's working. Doesn't know how much time he has left. Curses his overconfidence. But maybe the next person can learn from his mistakes. at all these books amazing he found scissors this is massive he rips the clothing up puts the bottle down and decides he's gonna finally craft his journal oh he needs thread easy enough Go find a dead zombie, rip up their clothing, and sometimes they generate thread. He thinks. Let's see. There it is. His plan is working. He needs to clean, find a sink and clean the leather. He begins to craft the journal. And now it's time for him to sit in the dark and put his life experience into it. He writes down everything he can 
as quickly as he can, hoping against hope that someone, somewhere, will find it and don't won't fall for the same mistake he does. How can one encompass a whole life in such a small book? He wonders. Took him forever to get here. Now, it's gonna be over. It is done. He renames it. The Todd Saga. Then he decides if he's going out, he's going out swinging. Places everything he thinks might be of value back into the trunk, including his precious journal. ACP 45 ACP he's decided he's not going to sit lightly by he is going to kill as many of these bastards as he can one of his favorite quotes And one of his favorite poems I forgets who need the name of it but it talks about not going quietly into that good night and he doesn't intend to with his skull painted on he takes aim he's never fired a gun before but it seems so easy in movies yeah gets one he can't believe the power he feels gets the other he reloads he will try to draw the horde away from where the key materials are. And now it's time for him to make his stand. No! Oh! That aiming was messed up. He reloads just in case. He's drawing a lot of people over. Or what would used to be people. This is not going as epically as Todd thought it would. He pictured seeing a hill of bodies. His aiming just isn't quite right yet. He keeps moving, scouting out the town. Shouldn't have stopped there. This looks like a police station or something.
A car alarm going off in the background, perhaps hit by one of his stray rounds. Starts reloading again. He's down to his last 12 rounds. Reloads for the one he knows is the last time. But he will not give in. He will not give them the satisfaction of feeling his fear. down to the cleaver you got him in a conga line he's doing no damage because he's so tired you will not take me he screams and that is how Todd McKinley died. You can see him walking around, barely a semblance of himself. He believes he gave a good account of himself. Look at all the zombies he drew. He doesn't know what to say. God decides that this was as good of a death as he could have hoped for, being ripped to shreds by the unwashed masses that he's despised his entire life. And now, hopefully, his legacy will go to someone else. Hey, everybody. So, teacher plays back here. Um, I don't know how this works. I don't know if I have to create a new character right away or if I have to do this. So I'm just going to click, click, make a random whatever to make him unemployed uh, called Norbert. All right. This isn't going to be the actual next character I play with. I'm going to kill Norbert pretty much immediately. All right. Oh, we keep our same map. That's good. Okay. But... From your comments, I will create the next character. So whichever ones I think are the best ideas, things like that, that'll be who I make next. I just want to make this to save the save state in the game. And uh, yeah, so I hope you're enjoying it so far. Please give me a comment. What kind of character do you want me to see? Do you want me to role play as? Uh, remember, I don't do voices though, because I, I think uh, you guys would hate me for that. So that's it for me. Um, Todd did not make it very long. Uh, that's Teacher Plays and Class Dismissed.